Hi, it's Dwyer. It's March the 26th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, you know, in sports you have narratives. People have kind of like an informal list of who the best are, who the hot young prospect is, right? Who is supposed to be the next new best thing? Now, occasionally that prospect delivers. Pat Mahomes in the NFL um, wins an MVP. The very next year, he's back in the conference championship game, comes back from a double-digit deficit, goes into the Super Bowl, comes back from a double-digit deficit there, wins a Super Bowl title. Right? People feel he's the best quarterback in the National Football League. He's delivered on the promise. Now, from this seat in the sports book, I'll just tell you, I personally would prefer in a big game, if my life depended on it, Russell Wilson at the quarterback position or Aaron Rodgers at the quarterback position. But, Pat Mahomes has delivered. There's no question about it. Right? Well, in boxing, one of those guys who's getting a lot of buzz, and he's unbeaten, he just blew out, Richard Kami, is Teofimo Lopez. Now, Lopez calls himself the takeover. Right, he's supposed to come in, and he's supposed to clean out the division. And, of course, rather than be bashful, after only 15 fights, he wants to fight two-time Olympic gold medalists, Lomachenko. He's even in interviews gone further. And he said, look, let's face it. Lomachenko is too small for me. Right? The feeling many people have is that Lopez is going to be able to back up Lomachenko. Rough him up. Body him up physically overpower him, right? Lopez has the higher KO percentage. Now, let me just say, Lopez is a gifted counterpuncher. There's no doubt about it. His read and recognition skills are far above average. He's one of the more promising prospects to me in the sport of boxing. Right? I enjoy watching him fight. The punch he hits Kami with is clean. Right, He's able to read an opponent. He's able to land clean shots. You notice it. But he's not Mayweather. He's not a freak athlete. With Mayweather, you knew that an opponent was not going to land that right hand to the body. That Mayweather's defense was such where he was going to have his left hand draped along his body and he was going to position himself at an angle where someone throwing a right hand couldn't find Mayweather's body. If they tried to find Mayweather's head, they would run into Mayweather's shoulder. Right? You understood that Mayweather was so good defensively that he didn't even have to throw the same amount of punches as his opponent. There were some rounds that, quite frankly, Mayweather's defensive brilliance would have won him on the scorecards. Of course, Mayweather had what I consider to be a hair-trigger left hook. Mayweather was extremely efficient in the ring. But, understand that even Mayweather had some problems in some fights. Right? A combination puncher. A guy who comes in and is throwing a lot of punches will throw off a counter puncher who's looking for snapshots, 
who's looking for moments. Right? One of my favorite counter punches in history occurred, and I've mentioned it before, in the Lennox Lewis Razor Ruddick fight. Understand, Ruddick hit as hard as anybody. Ruddick was dangerous. Emmanuel Stewart pointed out to Lennox Lewis that Razor Ruddick used to lean in at times and throw a lazy jab to an opponent's body, leaving his head open. So understand, Lennox Lewis is in the ring. Lewis could lead, Lewis could counter. Lennox Lewis was in the ring waiting for exactly a moment like that, right? Lewis had a few moments in his head. When that moment presented itself, Lewis playing the role of counterpuncher with Razor Ruddick's hand outstretched and his head naked. They knew, episodically, that Donovan Razor Ruddick, on some of his moves, would leave himself defenseless. During that small window, Lennox Lewis comes over, hits Ruddick, the fight's here on YouTube, and KOs him. Well, let me just say, against a combination puncher, right? Probably the most famous of the last 40 years is Sugar Ray Leonard. Against a combination puncher, you don't have those clear moments. In other words, Razor Ruddick wouldn't have thrown a lazy jab and left himself exposed. Rather, a combination puncher would jump in the pocket, throw a combination. A counter puncher has more data to process. Right? This isn't Richard Comey. Vasil Lomachenko is a combination puncher. Right? Let me go one step further, too. A guy who moves it doesn't have to be laterally around the pocket. It could be deep in the pocket. A guy with great coordination who can control his body, right? So when he throws a punch to your body, he ducks slow. He's not vulnerable to getting hit with some big right hand or left hook. Right, he's figured out how to contort himself, not to get countered. That guy will be able to take apart a counterpuncher. So let me say this. You have different levels of talent here. I believe this fight is a mismatch. I saw Lopez getting hit repeatedly by Masayoshi Nakatani. That's the fight you want to look at. Right, Lopez is getting hit with flush shots. Lopez couldn't figure out the angles coming back from his taller opponent who had a loop on his punches. Understand, counter punchers need to be precise. They're hanging close to the pocket, waiting for that opportunity, waiting for you to make the equivalent of a Razor Ruddick mistake. Right? That jab that's lazy, that you don't pull back to defend yourself. They want you to be outstretched so they could take advantage of the moment. When you start looping your punches where the guy's going to counter you, but the punch comes at an odd angle that they're having a problem blocking, and your punch is actually landing while they're trying to counter you. That can throw off a counter puncher. Understand, Mayweather didn't have to worry about that. Because Mayweather's defense was vastly superior to Teofimo Lopez's. Don't confuse the two. Right? Pat Mahomes might look like Russell Wilson on some place, running around the pocket, then throwing deep. In my opinion, he's not Russell Wilson. He needs speed receivers like Tyreek Hill. 
Russell Wilson just needs to show up, whoever the receivers are. Russell Wilson will do damage. Right? So let me just say this. I'm going to name some of the fighters I consider to be among the best in the sport in any weight class. And let's just quickly compare them to Lomachenko. Now, for me right now, if you ask me, oh, seven days out of ten, right? The other three, I might change my mind. But if you ask me seven days out of ten, who is the best fighter in the sport right now, pound for pound? I would say it's Terrence Crawford. And the reason is because Crawford's like the New England Patriots. He's a different fighter every fight depending on his opponent. Right? So Crawford can be aggressive in fights, the Indongo fight. Crawford could be a mover in fights. Crawford could be right-handed. Crawford could be left-handed. Crawford could live behind a jab. Crawford could live behind hooks. I consider his versatility to be simply off the page. He's really remarkable to watch. You study his fight style. You're prepared for his fight. You know what his opponent's going to do. Then Crawford comes out in the first round, and you think to yourself, man, I've seen several Terrence Crawford fights what the hell is he doing here? Right? That's a rare talent. Now, I give him the nod over Lomachenko simply because of the diversity of Crawford's skills, his, his approach. Right? Terrence Crawford doesn't have to be the Terrence Crawford of his last fight to beat you badly. But understand, Terrence Crawford isn't as fast to me as Lomachenko. Right? That Terrence Crawford, Yorkie Scamboa fight. You notice the speed gap between the two fighters. The Amir Khan, Terrence Crawford fight. You notice the speed gap between the two fighters. Right? Let's name another guy who I think is among the very best. In fact, I'll name two, both heavyweights. Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Right? I've seen fights where both of those guys weren't as fast as their opponents. Right? Both guys are in their 30s, but it's the heavyweight division. Heavyweights age a little bit more slowly. But I wouldn't consider either guy to be a freak athlete. Right? They're coordinated. Both guys, like Crawford, could go righty or lefty. They're coordinated. But we've seen fights where an opponent just looks to be physically more dominant, well, quicker than them. There's a sizable quickness gap in the Tyson Fury-Steve Cunningham fight. Right? You notice that as good as Tyson Fury is, right, he's just not fast like that. And Ali, and let's be clear, the Ali of the 60s is different than the Ali of the 70s. The Ali of the 70s is one of the savviest fighters of all time. That's different than the Ali of the 60s who is savvy and physically gifted. Right? You get the feeling if Ali fought Tyson Fury, the Ali of the 60s, Ali might be too fast for him. Right? Tyson Fury can go wherever he wants in the ring against lead-footed types like Deontay Wilder. Right? And Ali would be able to move around the ring with him. Right? The hand speed and reflexes on Ali would be quicker, much quicker than Tyson Fury's. Right? I think Usyk is a master technician. That Maris Breda's fight is razor 
close. Right, razor close. I also have some concerns about Usyk stamina. The same with Caleb Plant, another guy here on my very short list. Right, you notice that these guys get a little tired later in fights. Let me add another guy. Saul Alvarez has to pace himself. Can't go 90 miles an hour from the start of the race to the end of the race. Has to take rounds off. So these guys are technicians. But they don't have the stamina of a Lomachenko. Dare I say, Lomachenko to me might have the best stamina in the sport. He's certainly on my short list. I know he's in his 30s. I know he's a smaller guy and you would think they would age faster. But Lomachenko today has incredible stamina. Incredible stamina. More stamina than these guys. Right? He's faster. Can fight faster. Then Crawford, Usyk, Plant, Canelo. Let me add in another name. Errol Spence. You noticed when Spence fought Cal Brook early in that fight, there was a speed gap. You notice that Errol Spence with his foot on the gas couldn't get there as fast as Cal Brook. You also noticed that there was a foot speed gap. Cal Brook was able to circle. Errol Spence in the middle of the ring. Well, let's talk about foot speed. In fact, let's throw conventional wisdom on its head here. I believe in the sport of boxing. I'll just make this argument. Nobody cuts off the ring better than Lomachenko a smaller guy who doesn't have a big KO punch. I know Anthony Crawler would disagree with that, but let's just say, I've watched Lomachenko. You're talking about phenomenal feet. More importantly, you're talking about phenomenal control of spacing. So, heavy hitters, understand who he's faced, right? You'll be hard pressed to find a resume as good as this one. Heavy hitters like unbeaten Nicholas Walters, unbeaten at the time. Right? Walters, as big a punch as Teofimo Lopez has, quite frankly. Bigger punch, perhaps. Walters found his back up against the ropes. Right? I don't think people have explored the possibility that in a Lopez-Lomachenko fight, the guy backing up, the guy who might drown the other guy, have him backing up, have him out of his game, is Lomachenko. I'm telling you, they're bigger punchers in the sport of boxing. Nobody seems to back up folks and corner them better than this guy. The Luke Campbell fight. It's Lomachenko diving into the pocket. Campbell, master counterpuncher, finds himself backed up more than you would think in a fight in Campbell's backyard where Campbell's the bigger fighter. Right? I think Lomachenko is one of those guys who has great stamina, is among the very best at least in terms of cornering guys in the ring. Right? Understand, you have guys like Gervonta Davis who can back a guy up. There's that threat of big power. But Davis doesn't move remotely as well as Lomachenko. Right? Let me say this too. He's simply faster than Terrence Crawford. Then Canelo. Then Spence. He's simply faster than them. Right? This is Tyson Fury. Right? This is a fast guy. 
Let me also say too, in terms of body control in the sport of boxing, right? This guy here again is on the very short list. Right? You think of him as a master boxer on his back foot, switching hands and stuff like that. You know, wow. Few guys are harder to control in the sport of boxing than Lomachenko on his front foot. On his front foot, he's able to do things that a razor ruddy can't do. Right? He's very hard to hit flush. He does get dropped by Jorge Linares. But interestingly enough, he gets dropped in that fight when he got a little reckless, walked right down the middle. It was uncharacteristic of him. Walks right into Linares' shot. You know that Lomachenko is a master at not walking into shots. So I'm gonna name some guys who I feel are better than anybody. Teofimo Lopez has fought. Nicholas Walters, who was unbeaten at the time. Unbeaten Guillermo Rigondeau, Jorge Linares, Jose Pedraza. Understand, Lomachenko, an argument can be made, has already fought better than Teofimo Lopez. Let me say this too. You know, young guys think having swag, right? Having an attitude might intimidate Their opponent, right? Please figure out the history, right? If you're talking to, let's say, a Vietnam vet, a vet of Afghanistan, a Gulf War vet, and you're just a untested young guy who thinks he has game, and you feel that you can talk smack and intimidate a guy who's actually been in combat, right, may have had to use a firearm, has actually seen casualties of war, very rough times, right, isn't coming from or being raised in the United States, but is a fighter who's been raised in war-torn Ukraine or someplace like that. Just understand that the swag doesn't translate. Does Teofimo Lopez think that he's more intimidating to Lomachenko than, let's say, Nicholas Walters? In terms of skill level, does Teofimo Lopez think that his set of skills are more intimidating than Pedraza's set of skills? Right, Pedraza is a very skilled fighter. Right, so understand, to me, this is a young guy. This is a Pat Mahomes without the Super Bowl win, without the MVP trophy, without the record of coming back in playoff games from double digit deficits. This is a talented, unproven young guy, right? The Richard Comey shot that takes out Comey, where's Comey's hands? They aren't up here, right? Teofimo doesn't have to squeeze in the shot. No, Comey got sloppy, it happens in boxing, right? Comey's hands down at his side, he gets hit with a clean shot, he gets taken out, right? Based on that, which is his career win. Lopez shouldn't confuse that with the caliber of opponents that Lomachenko has fought repeatedly in his career. Right? Repeatedly. Keep in mind, some of these tough opponents, Luke Campbell, Lomachenko's fighting the guy in his backyard. Right? Understand the mental edge here. To me, goes to the Ukrainian fighter. Right? That's one of the reasons, too, why Usyk's so tough to beat. Because Usyk's a guy who will fight. Maris Breedis in Breedis' backyard. Right? Tony Bellew in Bellew's backyard. 
don't confuse these tough guys who've been through a lot, who don't even have a huge venue at home in a politically stable home to have fights at home even though they're popular at home. When you're fighting a guy like Lomachenko who's been taking a world tour, fighting on the road, the guy showing up, he's not even expecting the crowd to be on his side, right? When he fought Luke Campbell, he knew the UK crowds here rooting for the other guy. He knew that. So I don't think Lomachenko is intimidated. I think Lomachenko understands that he can go southpaw and throw. He can change the angles. He can change his hands and throw a young guy with 15 pro fights off balance. I know someone here in the comment section is going to say, hey, Lomachenko himself only has 15 pro fights. Right? But understand, Lomachenko has fought extensively as an amateur, has been in international competitions, is a two-time Olympic gold medalist. He's been on the world stage. He also has had the burden of high expectations placed on him for years. He's beaten excellent unbeaten fighters, right? Walters, Rick and Doe. He's beaten other guys who are underrated by the public, who I believe those in boxing know are highly skilled, like Pedraza. Right? I think Lomachenko's going to come in. He's going to move. I think Lopez is going to be astonished by Lomachenko's movement. He's going to be looking for the clear opening. He's going to be looking for the snapshot where he could throw power counters. And he's going to find out that he's against a guy who just moves too well and who's too fluid and throws combinations that Lopez is going to have to try to defend and won't be able to. Then I think what happens, and this has happened in several Lomachenko fights, an opponent is going to be there in the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds, and they're going to be thinking, okay, this guy can't keep this pace. He has to slow down. Then they're going to find themselves with their back up against the ropes. The guy continues to bring it. The stamina has very little drop off. The guy's volume is going to be consistent. They won't be able to catch the guy. They'll be overwhelmed. And just like Sonny Liston did against Ali, how Liston lost his title. Some of these guys are going to look at their corner, right? Many guys have against Lomachenko and have said, hey, I've had enough, right? The sport involves egos. Egos get bruised. Guys start to get deconstructed. They see the writing on the wall. Their stamina has dipped 50%. They're fighting a machine who's still hitting them, who's still pressuring them, who's cornering them. Right? A guy without a big punch is cutting off the ring on them. That's too much for many. I think it's going to be too much for Lopez. The bet I'm recommending is Lomachenko. To win, he's favored. He's the right side of the play to me. I like Lomachenko to win. I think he even has a shot at a stoppage, given the number of times that Nakatani landed flush on Lopez. I think Lomachenko has a shot at a KO. The bet I like is Lomachenko to win. I'll put some exploratory money on Lomachenko by stoppage. In fact, the proper way to play it would be Lomachenko to win, hedged with the fight not going the distance. The only way Lopez, who's unbeaten, who beat Nakatani by decision, the only way Lopez wins this fight, in my opinion, is by stoppage. Right? Lomachenko was down against Linares. Right? There is a bit of a size gap here. There's an age gap here. Maybe Lopez is able to rehydrate and come in the ring weighing a lot more than Lomachenko. Maybe he lands a lucky shot early. 
right? What I'm expecting is Lomachenko to dominate. I like Lomachenko to win. I'll hedge the play with the fight not going the distance. Why? Because I think there's a chance either guy could get a KO. The one thing I think I know is that Lopez is wrong. He won't be hunting Lomachenko. He'll be the guy getting hunted in this fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.